Whoa, 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 hold on. Hold your cats. <laughs> the fuck is this? You used to do poems before, Mergasto? You know, I am something of an aspiring poet myself. Here's one that I made recently. <clears throat> I display my collection of skeletons openly on my wrist, only employing their usage if someone carelessly insists. They jingle, jangle, clack. Each bone of yours, I'll make them crack. Nineteen eighty three. Oh, my. If I was going to be ripped apart anyways, having my body ripped apart would have been far better. I trusted her. No, I still trust her. Even in this very moment, I trust her. But I'm starting to realize I only wanted to trust her because I refused to accept the truth. It was as if I was trying to convince myself, in such a silly, sobbing voice. And those tears, those tears making a mess of my face. That mechanical, repetitious sound finally stilled, and everything fell silent. Only the cry of the cicadas remained, annoyingly loud. And yet... I felt as if I could still hear her voice. But that's not possible. She is no longer speaking. And the only one crying is me. She never cried. Even when she repeated those words over and over, she never expressed any emotion. Because there were none to show. If she had no tears to shed for me, then I... shouldn't need to shed any for her. And then why this pain? My eyes getting moist. Why was this happening? I still wanted to believe. I hadn't been split apart. That's enough, right? Inside me, an inner voice whispered gently. My spirit had suffered enough. In countless times I'd wavered over whether I should just throw the battered thing away. Except... I've stubbornly refused to do that, haven't I? I feel better if I just threw it away. Even knowing that, I chose to believe, didn't I? Only I can understand that painful struggle. And appreciate it. Hey, me? I tried more than enough. I will acknowledge that much. So... Isn't it all right to just take the easy way out? Besides, I'm not throwing it away. I'm leaving it behind, with her. Like flowers by a grave. Now then, calm your nerves. Even though you cannot feel your right arm, just lift it up. And with every swing, forget a little more. Oh, that kindness made me happy. That adorable smile brought me joy. I liked hitting your head. I loved how demure you were. Because this will be the last time. Because when I swing this down, I'll forget. This is my... First and last, bouquet for you. Perhaps I really did love you.
Somebody has been apologizing for a while now. I wonder what she's apologizing for. I felt wrong to eavesdrop, so I tried to ignore it. It had been a while since I last went to the city. I only returned to attend the funeral of a relative. Even though I lived there until last month, I found the bustle of the city to be overwhelming. And those skyscrapers and the multi-lane roads. The melodious cacophony of the crosswalk. Even the campaign speeches blaring in front of the station felt nostalgic. The place where I live now isn't nearly as lively. There's only the chirping of locusts and the babbling of brooks, and the cry of the higurashi, the evening cicadas. Yeah. Apparently so. Now the seagulls are no longer going to be crying. It is time for the cicadas. Well, actually, we're going to have to wait for the cicadas to cry, I guess, in this situation as well. Like, uh, Inimineko. It is when the tragedy ends that the seagulls, the sea cats, will uh, cry. I wonder if the same thing is going to happen here. Rather than making me feel lonely, that quietness had begun to instill a sense of serenity. There is nothing where I'm living now. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. I cannot say that I'm a huge fan of horror, in the sense that I don't, act I don't actively look for horror games to play in my spare time, in comparison to other genres that I'd rather play more. Like, I, uh, I have played my fair share of Outlast and Amnesia in the past. Those games are, like, nowadays I see those kinds of games and I think, eh, I honestly don't care about those kinds of like first person run away from the monster type of uh, horror and such. Those never interested me. Same case when I when I uh, watch some other people play those kinds of horror games. Now those those no longer interest me nowadays. I have played Corpse Party in the past. That did some. That did um, something on me in the sense that uh, it was a. Uh, Lovely experience, and uh, well, since this is a VN, uh, I'm hoping that this is gonna do some numbers for me in my eyes in a visual novel style horror. Maybe this is gonna be something great. Who knows? I guess we shall see. I don't just mean there aren't any burger joints, there aren't even vending machines, no music stores, no restaurants, and no arcades. An ice cream parlor? No chance. The nearest town has some stuff like that, but it's an hour away by bike. But, come to think of it, it wasn't really a big deal. There were music stores and arcades and ice cream parlors where I used to live, but it wasn't like I ever hung out at any of them. I had lived in the city for 10 years, and never once been to an ice cream parlor. Yeah, you know... Well, this is 1983. Hmm. I can understand that. Like, uh, I was gonna say that I never, I never really went to an arcade either. But I guess it's because uh, arcades don't really exist anymore. Those kinds of arcades that you would see in the 90s and such. I went to a gaming um, place where there are like computers that you can play. With your friends and such, but uh, other than that, nah. I should have gone at least once. It's only now that I'm starting to regret that a little. Somebody is still apologizing. At least she apologizes too. She doesn't apologize so much, so just forgive her already. There's no reason anyone should ever need to apologize so much. I started to feel a bit annoyed at whoever was refusing to forgive her. No matter how bad the mistake, there's nothing that can't be forgiven. There's no such thing as an irreparable mistake. You just need to be more careful next time. No. Oh. You know, that line, uh, those kinds of lines, I, I, I get the feeling that those are going to be important. 
aren't they? Like, uh, Higurashi at some point is gonna prove me that there are some mistakes that are gonna be irreparable, and you're gonna be punished for an eternity! Uh, yeah, for those of you who... who may have stumbled on this for the first time on this channel, I did Yumineko before Higurashi. Now, I... F I, I, from what I am hearing, for the most part, people have read Higurashi first and then Yumineko. So, I am one of the rare people who do the opposite. Mostly because I am, I am a visual novel murder mystery type guy. Like, I read murder mysteries, and Yumineko was one of the things that I was recommended. And now I'm doing this, like a, like a horror visual novel, which is... It's gonna be something new for me on this channel, that's for sure. Like, I'm just gonna pretend that I've done... That, like, I'm just gonna pretend that I've never done Outlast or that kind of crap on, on this channel. And just say that this is my first horror game on this channel. She's still apologizing, you don't know. Then, has she really done something that can't be fixed? I have no idea what she's done. But if it can't be fixed, then that's all the more reason to forgive her. No matter how much she apologizes, nothing will change. But even so, she keeps apologizing in such a heartbreaking voice. Hey, you. The one she's apologizing to. Why not just go ahead and forgive her? She's apologizing in such a pathetic voice. Keiichi, soro soro tsukuzo. Okinasai. I wonder if we're ever gonna meet that person who is apologizing so much. It feels important. I was finally aroused from my nap by my father's prod. Alright, Dad. Let's go. I assume Keiichi is the one that we're following right now. It seemed the train had reached its final stop. We'd spent hours riding everything from the bullet train to the local routes. It was hard to believe that the landscapes beyond the window in the city I was in half a day ago were in the same country. No, that they were even from the same era. Hmm. From there, we take a car deeper into the mountains. Past where the dense forest encroaching on the mountain road suddenly opened up. Ooh, what a beautiful place. Look at this. There, where I live now. Hinamizawa. Oh boy. Hinamizawa. And this is my new location. And I can hear the cicadas already. I assume those are the cicadas, right? The little insects that do the me 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 that that kind of a sound that I always hear, like everywhere else. It's it is a pretty <laughs> uh, like a, a common sound that you hear, even though we were approaching summer. The morning air still had a frigid bite. Although, in this change, you could feel your lungs up with crisp, clean air. Yeah, it has been a while since uh, I've been in such a place like this. <laughs> like, I've been to so many islands up until this point. To have a location in the mountains? Finally! Finally! <laughs> Something up my alley over here. Uh, you know, to think that after like two years of staying on one island, uh, and uh, like uh, on Rokenjima, in Mineko. And, you know, I still love that place. <laughs> like, I remember uh, that time when I was in uh, Jabuwok Island. That was a sucky place. I never want to go to that place ever again. Rokenjima? Yeah, I can still go there and uh, do like another Halloween party whenever I want to. <laughs> uh, but yeah. It is nice to have like a to stay in a place like this. I am more of a mountain type guy rather than a island slash beach type guy. 
flipping over the window while reading with a verdant expanse. Nothing but trees. The neighboring house was far away on the other side. <laughs> what is this? I'm a... Again, I'm going with the uh, with the mage nobby uh, type speech over here. So I was probably the only one enjoying that view and that air. I filled my lungs with another deep breath. Oh, magical air. <clears throat> okay. Since I started living in Hinamizawa, I learned that even air had its own taste. Mm. Tasty air. I quickly finished getting ready for school and headed downstairs for breakfast. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. My brother was the only one there. My father was nowhere to be seen. He was probably up working until the early morning. Dad had a rather unconventional job as a painter. He had such a laid-back profession. Uh, <clears throat> Get up when you want, sleep when you want, and work when you want. I'm so jealous of that easygoing lifestyle. Uh, mm. I even wrote for school that I wanted to be a painter when I grew up. Dad was ecstatic about that. It was just because it looked easy. I never tell him that, though. Mom laid breakfast out on the table. Seaweed, pickled vegetables, raw egg, and grilled salmon. Mmm, nice. Thank you, Mommy. My mom was such a good cook. It was scary. A perfect immaculate ideal breakfast. Yeah, the first big scare that your mom is a good cook. Oh! Unlike my dad, who didn't even know the meaning of the word schedule. My mom never squandered any time of effort. She hummed a little tune as she wrote over the miso soup. It seemed like she was in a good mood today. Yeah, I thought I was being cute. Responding with a wise crack after being praised for being good. Responding with a wise crack after being praised for being good. First, I will serve the steaming hot rice with the seaweed. After that, I covered it with the egg. Between bites of rice, I enjoy the crunch of the pickles. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Excellent, as usual. Mwah. Your mom is great, Keiji. Watching me clean my plate, mom gave me a warm smile. I was not a morning person when we lived in the city. I slept right until the last minute before school, and rarely ate breakfast. Boycotting the breakfast mom made me each morning, that was probably the only way I could protest being forced to attend cram school. I guess that was what you would call my rebellious phase. Okay, so how old is Keiji? Is he in high school? I won't so much as look at the breakfast she woke up early every day to make. I won't so much as look at the breakfast she woke up early every day to make. If I could go back in time, I'd slap myself. Mindful of the time, Mom rushed me along with a white grin. Rena-chan? Mom really seemed to enjoy the fact that her son was going to school with a girl. Mm. Rena is one of my classmates. She really loves looking at the people, coming to meet me every day without fail. The way I looked at it, a guy my age walking to school with a girl was just lame. Is it really? Is it? But, well, keeping a classmate waiting for me every day wouldn't be very considerate. Okay, so I have to ask, is this uh, girl somebody you, that you knew before moving to Hinamizawa, or she is uh, somebody you that you just met and started becoming friends? Seriously though, how long does Rena wait there for me every morning? Taking one last gulp of miso soup, I race for the door. Alright, bye mom. Come to think of it. Wait, that's not my mom. Come to think of it, those pickles weren't store-bought, were they? If I'd known that, I would have savored them a bit more. Alright. Let's meet this, uh, Rena-chan. Oh, 
Her cheerful greeting was a fresh her cheerful greeting was as fresh as the morning itself. Hello there. So you must be Rena. I got as high Okay, so I guess uh, we're gonna be having a situation here where we're not gonna get to see uh, Keiichi's face that much. This is one of those um, you get to see uh, like you're looking from uh, Keiichi's perspective, from his eyes and such, like old school visual novels. It's not like in. Um, It's not like in Danganronpa V3 where you finally get to see your main character like outside in certain fashion to say Bella or something like that. We're, we're back to this old style of visual novel. That's nice. She's so conscientious and such a good person. The thing is though, I don't even know what Keiichi looks like. <laughs> Jesus. Rena had a slightly troubled look on her face. Toying with her was rather fun because of how quickly her mood changed. With those words, Rena seemed to relax. Her face flushed bright red. Alright. I guess I guess so. You are the teasing type. As long as you as long as you don't tease too hard. Nice. Better turn bright red. Steam rising from her head as her brain short circuited. She's especially weak to this sort of talk. It's quite rare to find someone this fun to tease. From their response, I get that she was interested in them but was too embarrassed to actually buy one. Well, Let's hope that uh, next time you buy a romance novel, you're not gonna buy the wrong type of romance novel. Let's <laughs> let's try. Let's go with something simple first, and then build up to those spicy ones. I can imagine what would happen if she did read one. She'd probably turn red and pass out. So so, ofukuro kara dengon, tsukemo no sankyu deshita tte. The fuck? They weren't that salty. Actually, they had a pretty light flavor to them. You would have been fine to just be honest and say that they were good. But apparently I couldn't be that forthright. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'm going a little bit crazy over here, but uh, let me let me check something over here. I'll be back in just a second. My Nakahara. Oh my god, I was right. <laughs> Rena Ryugu in Higurashi when they cry. Yeah, I was I was freaking right. I, I that voice sounded so similar. It's there's no way. Oh my god. Nakisa, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I couldn't forget the voice like that. Her 
Her attitude completely changed as she began to panic frantically. Lena? Lena no Oka san ka? Na, nan de tsukutta hito kiku n daro? Daro? Dotchi ga tsukutta ka de, kansou ga ichijiru shiku kawaru. She counted frantically on her fingers, trying to remember the amount of salt she used to pickle them. I'm oh, sorry, I just... I'm not paying attention to the dialogue, I'm paying attention to the fact that she's voiced by the same VA that did, not, did Nagisa. Any second I expect her to to yell out the name, Okazaki-kun. <laughs> it wasn't like I was trying to tease her, but I couldn't stop myself. Guys who take pleasure in this kind of thing are probably the worst. Guys like me. When I nervously open and close her mouth over and over, trying to muster a response. Le Lena, but... It was good. Huh? It was a good time for the last time. It was a good time for the last time. It was a good time for the last time. red again. She was completely spacing out. It truly was a lot of fun to tease her. I pray that Rana never gets taken advantage of by some low life. Uh, let's hope. Keep at it, Rana. I'll train you until you can handle it like the average person. Okay, so. I feel like the same thing uh, was with um, Tomoya <laughs> and Clanad. Same with Tomoya and Nagisa. Tomoya was uh, teasing uh, Nagisa from what I remember. And uh, he tried at points to, you know, toughen her up and have her learn some stuff so that she wouldn't be taken advantage of. Because Nagisa, she wasn't. Um... I feel like she's basically the same as uh, Rena here. Keep at it, Rena. Seeing as she just keeps spacing out otherwise, I called Rena back to reality so we could make our way to school. The strange, easily flustered girl is Rena Yugu. I've only known her for about a month, but I couldn't realize it's not just her name that's strange. Okay, so you've been here for a month, alright, so... So you have met her for the first time here in this village. Coming up to the next rendezvous point, we saw another person waiting for us. Alright, who's well, gonna be the next in our roster? Noticing us, she waved. Hi there, Mion. In sharp contrast to the village in Rena, this one marched to the beat of her own drum. She's Mion Sonozaki. For what it's worth, she's our senior and head of the class. Hello, Rena. And Kei-chan, it's been a long time. How long have you been? Oh. I haven't been here for a while. Ha ha ha. So, that's it? Mion's gaze started at my chest and dropped straight down, focusing on the point between my legs. Whoa, hey! So she was saying it was my crush that was cuter back then. <laughs> Before you ask, just to be clear, I've never actually tried to show it to her. Um. I've grown quite splendidly. You'd be surprised. What the fuck? Why is um why is the voice acting not working here? Like it's only stopped. Wait a minute. Is this one of those talks that you guys had on Discord about how some voices are not well, I don't even remember what it was, like like some lines were no longer voiced, or there were some stuff changed because of censorship, maybe? Hmm. Weird. So that's the evident that I'm gonna be doing some voice acting here? Oh boy. You know, I've done some voice acting before. Before you mean Echo. I... 
I guess I can do some, like right now. Not only is he bigger, but he has a little mustache now. Being so engorged with energy every morning is quite a problem, though. Engorged? What the fuck? I'll introduce you next time, so be sure to greet him properly. Oh. Oof. Don't say next time. Right now is just fine. Oh, you wanted to. <laughs> How about letting the little guy get a breath of fresh morning air? In front of Rena? <laughs> you know, I said that we should start with a with an easy romance novel before going for the big stuff, but I think this is a little too extreme. I don't think I've ever heard talk so dirty you could. I don't think I've ever heard talk so dirty you could smell falling up the morning air before. Like, the entire air of Hinamizawa is gonna be stenched by this girl. Nyo sure does act like an old man sometimes. Gotcha. Alright, well, time for the big review! Hope you don't regret it. As my hand reached for my fly, when I begin to rumble in a near panic. No! Red faced and flustered, Renat tried to play dumb, but it was obvious she knew exactly what we were talked about. Nyon switched gears, dropping the dirty talk and changing the topic to something more befitting the pleasant morning. お前、人の話聞いてないだろ。俺は葬式で帰っただけだぜ。おもちゃ屋巡りをしてる余裕なんかなかったんだよ。トイストーズ。ちちち。おもちゃ屋とホビーショップは全然違うよ。特に洋物
and then I left happily. From such a friendly conversation, you wouldn't think they had moved here less than a month ago. I know, right? I understood that they did all they could to make a transfer student like me feel at home. I have to try harder to fit in. So they won't feel like they have to try to make me feel welcome. I feel like if I acted a bit more open than usually am. I feel like if I acted a bit more open than I usually am, it should probably be about right for this place. Alright, so, okay. We are at school right now. Hinamizawa was a really small village. Not only was there only one school, but it was only one class. Actually, come to think of it, like, we're in a school setting. <laughs> Have I... <laughs> okay, I, I do remember I did, like, Hatofu Boyfriend. I feel like that was the first time I did, like, a visual novel with a school setting and such. <laughs> Under that, there was Danganronpa 1, but... Eh, you wouldn't consider that a high school slice of life style, style uh, visual novel and such. On a channel, that is. Like, in my spare time, I've done, like, quite a few uh, visual novels with uh, school setting, of course. And that class encompasses all different grades and ages. There are about 30 students at different levels, and they all study in the same class. I'm told that long ago, there used to be a bigger school building and they had actual separate classes. However, it seems something happened that made it become... However, it seems something happened that made it become a single class. And now it stayed that way out of tradition. Only one class? I was shocked at first. But humans adapt pretty quickly. I already gotten quite used to it. The solid shouldn't playing started right from the from the morning. With such a lively mood, it felt more like a kindergarten than a proper school. Not that that was a bad thing. Mion, who had been walking in front of us up until then, suddenly let me take the lead. Okay, so I want to uh, check something. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so one class encompasses all different grades and ages. There are about 30 students at different levels and they all study in the same class. Okay, but well, how many teachers are there, actually? They just have to keep shifting between uh, different kinds of students and at different levels. Right in front of the classroom door. So I was meant to slide the door open and enter the room first. <laughs> Too bad. I wasn't going to fall for that again. Yeah. What are you gonna do? You're gonna put a bucket of, like, water on top of the door? <laughs> Beyond chocolate with a holy smirk on her face. She? What? Satoko chan. Her name was Satoko Hojo. She was a disrespectful, impudent, bossy kid. The way she talks is annoying, but it would be immature to get worked up over just that. The real problem was this. Yeah, there you go. Something like that. A haughty laugh came from beyond the door. She's gonna do like a double trap. After falling for such intricate traps since the day I transferred, I no longer let my guard down. Satoko liked to combine a variety of traps. Traps that were simply there to bait you into the main one. Traps that relentlessly kept coming at you like a sadistic Rube Goldberg machine. The list goes on. Well, let's hope that there is not going to be like a 
Rube Goldberg machine type thing where you're gonna get like a like a huge heavy ball on your head. Ugh, that would actually suck. As well as being clever, they almost never miss fire. When you least expect it, she strikes. No escape. No time to relax. Maybe, uh, maybe that uh, racer is tied with string to something else that is gonna. Um, maybe there's gonna be like a gun, like right in front of the door. Like the racer is gonna um, pull uh, the, the string that is gonna pull the trigger of the gun. And it's gonna shoot you in the head. I took a pretty heavy hit from a blackboard racer loaded with rocks on my first day. That's what Satoko was after. Making me focus my attention upward. So as I lifted my hand to the door, there were thumbtacks stuck to the sliding door handle with tape. A frightening trap. Oh! A potent and terrifying trap. Concealed by using the blackboard eraser. Okay, well, how about a fur trap that you're not aware of? And we're just gonna keep going and going and going with new traps, like endlessly. The endless trap. Assured of my victory, I threw the door open and stepped into the room. I felt something strange at my ankle. It was similar to the sensation of a jump rope catching on my leg. Oh! By the time I realized she had me, hook, line, and sinker. It was already too late. I began to fall in an almost picturesque manner. Instinctively re reacting to Mion's shrill warning, I twisted my body in midair before I landed on the floor. Like that move in the Super Paper Mario game. <laughs> Except uh, Keiichi failed to do so. An ink stone filled to the brim was placed right where I would have landed. I shuddered, imagining the situation had I landed square on it. Uh, still sprawled in an awkward position, I was greeted by a mocking voice. So you must be Satoko. Nice to meet you. I think that I inadvertently sprained my back a little when I landed. Better than laying on that inkstone. A small hand gently rubbed my head. Hello there, little girl. The small dainty hand continued to gently stroke my head. Why you just sweet? I thought about asking how rubbing my head would help my back, but I didn't. It's not so much about what you actually do, it's the thought that counts. Yeah, thank you, Rika chan. Rika-chan greeted each of us with an adorable bow. He was infectious. Rena, Mion, and I all bowed back. Yeah. So, it is true what they said about how in this class there are different kinds of um, students, kids of different ages and levels. Keiichi, uh, more than likely, uh, Rena and Mion seem to be of a similar 
level slash like assuming like a grade from high school and such uh, Rika and Satoko they seem much younger but your babies all of them I'm glad to meet them all assuming that this is all of them I glad over in her direction Satoko was whistling while rather deliberately trying to avoid eye contact I picked up Satoko by the back of her collar. She looks like a misbehaved cat when I do this. But a cat wouldn't be setting traps. Uh, well... There is... There, there is Tom and Jerry. There is... There is a precedence to that. Presidents? Is that the right word? There is evidence for that. <laughs> She's much harder to deal with. I cocked my index finger on my thumb, letting it tremble as I brought it closer to Sakotoko's forehead. Small hand tugged on the back of my shirt. Rika-chan really is just so... How did I do anything more after being told that? I gently released my grip on Satoko, who at this point was on the verge of tears. She still had her eyes clamped but shut. And she braced herself for the forehead flick. Rika gently petted the head of her prankster friend. So cute! You both are adorable. You would never guess those two are the same age. I think Satoko could learn a thing or a million from Rika-chan. Okay. I do have to say this. When I heard Satoko's voice for the first time... Uh, well... Okay, I'm not even gonna put I'm not even gonna beat her on the bush. Uh, I did hear a little bit of Lambda Delta in her voice, so I'm gonna assume that this is the same voice actress for Lambda Delta. But she, like, uh, after hearing a little bit more, she does a pretty good job of doing like a different kind of voice. That I no longer recognize Lambda Delta in that a little bit. Wait a minute. She observed the scene. Rena's expression grew ecstatic as she began to swoon. Like, can I please take them in my backpack and travel the world with them, please? And I keep the cutesy face even as outrageous ideas spewed from her mouth. According to Mion, Rena is ridiculously weak to cute things and always tries to take them home. <laughs> yeah, you and me both, sister. Object or person. Rena swooned over Satoko's crying form. If a girl ever goes missing in Hyunami Zawa, I'll be forced to turn Rena into the authorities. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty fitting end for Rena. Forgive me, Rena. 
I'll be sure to bring you care packages when they put you away. <laughs> oh. Just from Mio's single statement, the entire mood of the room shifted back to normal. The inkstone was bad, but the thumbtacks stuck to the door handle were an even bigger problem. I pulled the tape off carefully, making sure not to skewer myself. Alright, school is in session. Even though Satoko was the one who set it up, everyone had to pick up after her. By the time the teacher entered the room, the bell lamp from before had been neatly tied up, tidied up. Okay, good. <laughs> Mion gave out the morning commands. It's difficult being the teacher for all these different grades in one classroom. She has to teach something different to, t to each one. But naturally, she ends up spending all her time with the younger kids. Rena and Mion, being at the highest grade in the class, end up mostly doing self-study. They even end up helping teach the younger kids, so it seems like they can never get to their own studies. They're actually way behind where my studies have progressed to. As a result, I'm pretty much taking over for the teacher and helping Rena and Mion with their studies. Rena took a breather after finishing highlighting an important section. In contrast, this person over here is quite... Uh, I don't know that word. Is it fair about things? For one, isn't she supposed to be in a higher grade than me? Mion, it's not a word. It's not a word. Her staunch defiance was really something else. This was a different type of relaxed than somebody who already knew what was going to be on the entrance exam. Mi-chan,Kei-chi-kun,頑張って教えてくれるんだからさ。私たちも頑張ろうよ。レナは素直ないい子だな。先生が。きっといい学校に進学させてやるからな。ありがとう。レナには特に教えてやるからな。二人きりでプライベートレッスンだぞ。プライベートレッスン。A puff of smoke shaped like a halo popped out of Rena's head. Hmm, we're getting spicy around here. Exactly what kind of private lesson is she fantasizing about that's making her turn so red? Oh my. Don't tell me that she already read like a romance novel. In between the time that we talked about it until now. She wasn't studying in class, she was reading the romance novel. <laughs> I'd like to hear the play-by-play -play of that next time. While Neon was flipping through her vocabulary flashcards, she threw out a casual question. <laughs> こんなに勉強しなきゃいけないわけ。この程度はできないと進学できないね。進学できないから勉強するわけ。まあ、平たく言えばそうなるな。将来役に立たないのは承知で。こっちじゃあさ、出席日数が足りてりゃみんな進学
It was too profound of a statement to simply laugh off. But since it was me on, it probably didn't actually have that deep of a meaning. In this for chime, the sound of the principal waving a handbell drifted through the classroom. In a complete 180 from her unmotivated state, Myon gave the commands that signaled the end of the morning period. I might have been making a very troubled face. Rena smiled brightly at me. There's tend to be different cliques, even within a class. Most of them were divided by gender and age, but our group was different. Our ages were different and we had both boys and girls. But we weren't reserved around each other. This level of openness makes a transfer student like me pretty happy. Huh. Like, as far as I can see, we only have Keiichi and uh, the rest are girls. I'm fine with that. Rena and Mion pushed their desks together so that they were facing each other. At the same time, Satoko and Rika Chan were slowly lugging, lugging their desks over as well. Lugging? Lugging? Keep in mind, for those of you who are new to this, like if you are new to this channel, well, first things first, welcome, hope you enjoy your stay, and second, my first language is not English, so you gotta keep that in mind. Sometimes there are gonna be some words that are, that are a little bit weird to me. Rena waved her chopsticks, in an unrefined manner, trying to hurry me along. Unless they want us together, they wouldn't even open their lunchboxes. Uh oh. Okay. I do have to talk about this before we end <clears throat> the, part, the part here, like, real soon. That I hear Lambda Delta in her voice. At least at the beginning, I heard her for the first time, I heard Satoko for the first time, and it, made, it reminded me of Lambda Delta. Well, it's not the same voice actress. It's actually a completely different one. I think it was called... I think she was called... Mika Kanai? The voice was completely different. It's just in those first lines they reminded me of Lambda's voice actors, but no, it's a completely different one. Like Rika, on the other hand, <laughs> I couldn't recognize the voice actors, but yeah, true enough, it is the same voice actress as Ben Castell. <laughs> I think it was Yukari Tamura. Yeah, I think it was Yukari Tamura. The same voice tra voice actress, even though it sounded so different, so unrecognizable, I couldn't I couldn't uh, recognize the voice actress. So yeah, even though Satoko was hurling insults at me, she still wouldn't open the lid to her lunchbox until I was there. I pulled up my lunchbox swiftly and dragged my chair over to join the circle. Oh, omatose. Right. <laughs> Representative me? At first, this was kind of embarrassing, but I got used to it pretty fast. At this point, I probably wouldn't even open my own lunchbox if someone else was too slow. Our ages and genders may have all been different, but we were all friends. The sound of our little five-part chorus echoed beautifully throughout the classroom. Really though, I got pretty used to this group made of all girls. Yeah, you would get used to it. Of course, there are other boys in the class, but they were a lot younger, so they were scared to approach me. Yeah, they don't they don't matter that much. Well, that's to be expected. Younger boys just see older boys as scary. Compare that to girls, well, at least these girls aren't picky. We put all the side dishes in the middle where everybody was free to pick at them. 
I thought girls would mind sharing a meal with the guy, so I was a bit flustered joining in. However, Mia noticed that and teased me quite a bit. As the fruit of my efforts, I can now reach over and take sides from anybody's lunch. Buying into the fight that Satoko was starting, our st uh, chopsticks locked in a cross counter, stabbing into each other's lunch. After seeing my happy face, Rika-chan's expression broke into a little smile. By the way, Satoko and Rika-chan's lunches are always the same. It seems that Rika-chan makes it for both of them every day. Hmm, okay. Delicious. I was honestly impressed. The carrot rosettes weren't from a mold. They were done by hand with a knife. 